Well, now it's your turn, Jason. I'm sure they saw you in the background earlier in the MST bar video that has released probably a couple of weeks prior to this one. But thank you for making the trip down from Northern Indiana. Glad to be here. To be able to discuss Superform. There's been a couple of questions and maybe I should say several about, hey, can you take that block apart and show it to us? And then also I have a very tricky corner that I'd like for you and I to figure out to show everybody. I've already shown them versatility, but now this is like one step further in versatility because we've got some very interesting things to accomplish. And I wanted you and I to work on that together. Sound like a plan? Sound like fun. Yep. Let's get this going. So before we get to this very technical corner that you guys saw us in the video with the last time we stacked out these three courses, that corner right there, Jason's going to give us an explanation of a dissected block. This is part of my waste, so we didn't waste anything here. The floor is yours, sir. All right. So here we have taken a piece of foam and ripped it off of here to show you guys how the where the stud is at. I understand Matt's been getting some questions about that, like where is the stud and how do I find them? So they're every six inches in the foam and they're, they're covered by about a quarter inch of foam and it's made out of high density polypropylene, virgin material. So it's very got a very strong pullout strength and they're, excuse me, they're every six inches in the wall as we stated. Yeah, we can so, show them that here. So okay. if you look at this side of the block where we haven't taken the foam off, you see a squiggly says super form. And if you look down here at this block where there is webbing, you see superform, 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 superform. That is the six inch on center spacing. And that webbing. And if we look at this, there's the top. Yes, of there's that the one. top, which means this block sets and down at the exact same spot every match time. Right up at the top of that one. Yes. Sits down. And then if you look at what we did take apart, let's pop that off of there. This is why it's called a webbing. In an earlier video, you guys saw we were locking rebar into these three lock areas. That's for your spacing. But this webbing connects the inside of the ICF to the outside of the ICF. So when concrete gets in here, this is what keeps your ICF from just blowing apart. So, and then as Matt's already stated, for locating in the wall, you go to Oh, well, that block isn't put on there. We did that for a reason for another out. conversation yeah. piece here in just a minute. <laughs> yep. If we go here. You guys see he, what he did there was lined up his studs. So, and without foam, this is what it looks like on the inside of that EPS. And you may, you may get this question about why the bow tie shape here. If we were to peel that foam off, that make like a bow tie shape. Uh-huh. That's designed that way for running electrical. So you run your you run your chainsaw right through this area when you're making electrical groove and that's less of the polypropylene to cut through. You know how I do it? I don't know. Just wherever. I just cut like crazy with the saw. You can make it a little easier by hitting this line. <laughs> do you know why I did it my way? Because I never knew what you just stated. You taught me something today. Oh, there you so go. what he's explaining there is let's just say what is this with one and a quarter? One and a quarter. Yep. So this is one and a quarter wide and it comes down to essentially three eighths of an inch this stud down here is going to have that same taper. So when you cut through this to embed your electrical wire, imagine my fingers at electrical wire and it's not as long, but you tuck your wire into the ICF after you chainsaw a groove into the foam only. And if you come down here and do it at this intersection point, you have less plastic to cut through right. won't, instead won't of cutting through the solid stud here. It'll go faster and it won't dull your blade as soon. So. Gotcha. And I will, just so you guys know, I will put out a video when I go to do the electrical here as to how you make sure your chainsaw doesn't hit concrete, how you make sure you're the proper depth for your depth for your wire to tuck in there really nice. I do have a did have a pencil. This is a better explanation. So this is the width of the 122. That's the thickness. Essentially, you're shoving it in the wall like this after you cut a groove in it. That's all you're doing. Right. And you want that groove just wide enough that that will go in there and stay because you want to, you don't want it popping back out. A on friction you, right? fit. Yeah. The coefficient of friction of the EPS pinching it because EPS is springy will hold your wire in place once you tuck it in there. And it's just really easy to put it in these grooves. 
we actually did a test when I built my house. We took the chainsaw and we went like this, just because once you put memory in copper, it typically stays there, sure. but we were worried about it popping out of the wall like you just state. You tuck that stuff in there, it doesn't come out. You throw your drywall right over top of it. But that's another reason why straight lines are better, because when you start to screw off your drywall, you know where your wire is, right. and you can make sure your drywaller understands where the electrical is. So anyway, that's kind of getting off in the weeds, but go ahead here. So you talked about the bow tie shape and you know, the electrical going here. Yeah, I'd like for you to take that block and offset it incorrectly. Okay, like we had it? Yeah, so I've always been telling you guys you have to put your studs over top of each other. You have to put your studs over top of each other. You don't have to, but the reason we line our studs straight up and down is so when you go to put finish on this, let's say you're using drywall. If these studs aren't lined up and you start screwing your drywall down here, you're going to run into nothing but foam. You're going to get zero hold strength here. The hold strength is in the stud, just like a two by four wall. Right. You have to hit a stud. So it's no different. So if so you offset these and you follow up, you're going to get to where you don't hit a stud. So the goal is to always have your studs lined up, but I wanted to also show them you can still interlock your block. Right. For example, if you get to a common, instead of doing it my way, which is a straight common, I personally believe that's better for when you go to hang things on your finished product. You measure from your inside corner of your home, which is actually the outside corner of the room, to the left, for example, and you're every six inches. Well, as long as your contractor tells you there's a common in the center of that wall, you know to stop halfway, and then if you're going to hang pictures over here, you pull from the left corner to the right, and you're still on six inch centers until you make it to your common. But since these blocks allow you to offset your studs, there's another way of doing that. And essentially this next course would go over top of the common. And then this course would go over top of that course, which would create what I would call a zipper effect. And that will still work, but now your studs guaranteed are gonna be like this. <clears throat> Yep. Instead of straight up and down. We would end up with, with a stud that went straight through here and a stud that went straight through here, but in the middle, we would have this zipper Correct. effect. You would have this one stop, and then these two start, right. and then this one start again right here. Yep. Each course would alternate where that stud lands. So potentially, your drywaller, if they were using that stud to fasten, then they could be upset. Right. So really, that's the main thing we're trying to do, is make it easier for the, tr for the, for the next guy. to follow, right? That's right. And even on these commons, we still mark that out. We still have the conversation with the next guy in line, which here at the castle, I'm the next guy in line, so I don't have to have that conversation. But if you're building with ICF and then you subcontract a drywaller to come in, or even worst case, someone hanging cabinets, mm -hmm. those guys really get particular when they can't hit studs. You can at least state, here's the straight line, or here's the alternating studs. So you got to measure from your outside corners in to get your center points. That's the main reason why I wanted to show the offset block there. And the corners. Superform does your corners a little different. Some yeah. other block manufacturers, it doesn't matter which corner you grab. You can just grab and run, whereas your all's corners are lefts and rights. And I have shown that in the past. The key reason for me to know that is because you alternate your corners alternating corners and then i'll let you describe why you guys made them this way so you can see here this corner makes a short right here's the seam and then the next corner on top of it makes a long so that seams over here so these seams are overlapped by again that two stud minimum that i always talk about but why did superform choose we'll go back over in the shade it's hot why did superform choose to make a non-reversible corner well it's just our block is non-reversible, so they got. And your reason was the foundation, right? Right. That that is one advantage is when when this block sets flat on the found on the footer, the bottom of this is flat, so it grips the footer well and it holds the bottom of the wall in place. As opposed to if the knobs were on the bottom, then it, there's not nearly as much contact area. And you guys can see the tips of the males only touch if this was a footer whereas when you put it on the female side it's 
contact the entire distance. So even if your footer is off, your foundation's off a little bit, say you got some low spots and high spots, you're still spanning that by four feet. And the other thing that you guys market is that you don't have to foam this block down because it has more right. surface area touching the foundation. More contact surface. And I still foamed down <laughs> because that's just what I'm used to, right? And it's not a hindrance. You can still foam down. That's not a big deal. Right. So that was their main reason for making them non-reversible. Now you can take these blocks and you can rotate them 180 degrees and they will still stack out the exact same. You just can't flip them vertically 180 degrees. Right. And the corners, you go from left, left on the first corner, right on the next and so on. Yes. And, and it, it works out just fine. And he so. says that because I didn't do that. So that's a right and that's a right. But the main no, thing, right. oh, I did do it right on this one. Like the, you got the short leg there and then the short leg is in. So, Correct. Yeah, you're right. I am right on this one. I thought I did this one he wrong. He thought he was mistaken, but he I was did. wrong. I think on the pull, we did it the other way. As long as you alternate your corners, the whole point to alternating your corners is then every seam thereafter is alternated. That's the real purpose, yep. is to ensure you never have, there's that word again, ensure you never have seam to seam. That's a major no-no. Right. Big time don't do. You ready to uh, fabricate point, something tough? Point out something else on okay. this corner quick. So, for fastening on the outside of a corner, there is a fastening strip that runs the full width from clear out the edge the whole way here. Okay, and you guys top can kind of see yep, you can see the, the top, top of that portion there. of that. And also, it's not marked on here, but there's also a web that same width there that runs from here clear to the next web, right in the center. And we would have destroyed a corner, but I don't have any extra. <laughs> so we're going to explain this without destroying a corner. Yep. So that way, if you have a vertical siding that needs to be fastened, it can be fastened here like a, a corner. A wrap. corner, yep. And the other thing it does is it adds a lot of strength to our corner. Okay. And not all blocks have this. I know some I've... other blocks have an extra tab off of their Mm -hmm. stud but you have to hit a specific tab what you're explaining right. is the full corner right full corner both all sides the all the way up and down you can Lost screw this. to and then to the first stud out of the corner you have this horizontal piece do you have the same thing over here to the first stud yes. or no yes okay sides. so again first stud in the center of the block that plastic is all connected which again, strengthens your corners, not to mention your all's already added strength of every six inches right. to this wall. Yeah, it gives us a very strong corner. And then we also have the one, of course, that runs the mm -hmm. 0.5 across there. Perfect. How about a tough corner? Let's try it. I'm honestly, I don't think this is gonna be hard, but it's gonna take some of this. <laughs> so what I was gonna do, and we're gonna stack this out and show you guys what I was gonna do first, and then I'll let Jason explain to you guys why it's not that it's a horrible idea, but it's not the best idea. So my original thought process was I was going to notch a corner, but these blocks have zero strength if you don't have at least your top or your bottom webbing, correct? That's right. Yep, that's what holds the two sides. So in order to notch that to blend in with this, this is the amount of block that I have left, which is less than getting to the bottom of this web. So I said, well, if I just offset to the top of this, interlock this to the bottom of another corner, because this would actually be a long section of corner here, and this block would actually be over here. I can then come in here and block this out with wood to stiffen up this corner on the inside and the outside. But you said you have a better idea. Let's, let's talk about that. Well, the potential problem with that is when we pour concrete in, we would have a piece of wood coming right down here. Yep. So the concrete would come out to this edge. So you'd have a two inch gap, a two inch two, flat part under right. the ICF. That would create a shoulder so that the concrete would come down here and that would want to lift on this as you were pouring. Okay. Which, you know, it, it could be handled, but it, it could potentially be a problem area. Yeah, because so. I could just run strapping down two and, and tie it all well, in. You could tie this, clear down in with this. But right. what you're saying is, since I already 
butchered a corner trying to determine if I had enough height to start with a really short corner down in the bottom. So this corner is essentially useless, but we're gonna make use of it. And it, what you're saying is we're gonna just use straight styrofoam. Yep, we're gonna cut out a foam wedge, in the, but it's, a, it's gonna be a corner wedge. And it'll have the, the stud block. still in it. Yeah, and we'll still have the, the web in it. Yeah, the, the we're just showing you that we that you can fasten to. We'll have that part in it, but it will not connect to the other side. So that will fill that out and that will give us thermal protection for thermal transfer through the wall. And it would also, will also eliminate that shoulder problem of concrete coming in and so lifting that wall up. We'll show you guys the actual cut piece, but imagine this ICF going all the way to this two by four, all the way over to here, and then been notching around the two by four and coming all the way to the concrete and matching this block. That's what we're gonna fill in by butchering that corner, putting it in there first, and then placing this corner on top, and then another corner with a long point to tie it all together. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. Well, now we got her cut, but before we put our Frankenstein piece in, we were explaining to you guys over here that Superform's corners have more rigidity than most because the corner is full and you can screw to the entire corner. Since we cut that, now you guys can actually visually see. Normally, this is all you have to screw to, but you can see here, you can come all the way to this corner. The only spot you might miss is that first half of an inch if you were to put a nail or a screw in right there. So as long as you come over to this first line off the corner and put your screws from there to the other line, you're gonna hit this entire plastic corner for true strong attachment. This is also a good visual of a cross cut. Yes. So, so that's the stud we're talking about. You can see the distance of foam there. And then that's the webbing that connects to the other stud here. That's a great top image. Yeah. Yep. Fasteners, go right, fasteners in go right into it. You can screw into this. And I've, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what are you going to put on the outside of my addition right here? I'm going to use vinyl siding that sure. matches the bump out. Because I don't, I got a, enough rock. Mm -hmm. And maybe long term I'll do a lick and stick. But right now vinyl siding gets me waterproofed and it gets me covered. And what I use is roofing nails, but the roofing nails with the few, they have like five ring, ring shanks shank on them. Roofing nails, you yeah. don't necessarily want to use straight smooth because the vibration that the wind creates, because you do not nail your siding down tight, for those of you who know that, those of you who don't, you never nail siding down tight or it buckles. So you always make it to where your, your vinyl can slide. Well, since you're not nailed down tight, the vibration from the wind can wiggle that nail out if you don't use ring shank roofing nails. So as long as you have ring shank, you can just use roofing nails to attach your vinyl siding to the outside, your vertical siding, whatever you choose to use. Yep. And you could you could absolutely shoot it down with a power nail or two. Trim, so actually, trim nailer is fine. A lot of guys are using DeWalt roofing nail guns with an attachment that goes in the groove opposite the one you're going to nail in and it lines you up perfectly and you can set your depth. And as long as you use the coils that have the three or four ring shanks on them, you're good. So you're right, you can just shoot them right in there. It just all comes down to the depth setting on your nailer at that point in time. You okay. ready to install a Frankenstein piece? Yes, sir. We, we don't know yet where that thing's gonna fit. So we don't. <laughs> that's, that's why I put them on regular, regular here so they could see if we failed at the same time that we see if we failed. Yes, you guys are going on the popcorn sign stand that the popcorn sign fell off. And you can see, it's a real Frankenstein piece. It, the only thing keeping it together is that one web which is why I was just gonna block it in, but their point about lift makes perfect sense. And I think I saw one problem. And maybe or, it's not uh, a problem because it's off that edge over there. So really we need to take this and 
this off of here now. We're uh, still just a little bit high. Okay. Um, I believe it's on the outside here on this right. angle. Yep. I agree. That needs to canter just down. Because this, there's still room to come down. Yes. So um, we need to bring this gonna, vertical cut higher. We're gonna have to remove this left thing here because okay. that's, that's hindering us. Well, yeah, we, we just gotta cut it off here. Shorter. Right? Yep. Then, it's hitting on the concrete right there. Yep. So. Oh yeah, we, we've got a good two inch gap there. Yeah, we need to start that about right there. So, and always remember, spray foam is your best friend. We're trying to mitigate the amount of lift this corner has. We're not trying to make this perfect. <laughs> This will be the corner that we need next. So this was my model here, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was about a two inch gap. So I think I need to take like about an inch or so here. And then continue that angle to the long point. Yes, All see? the way, okay. You'll go from one inch to nothing, right? But we'll run that out to here, you're saying? No. No, only from the point that you marked here. That can go down, I believe, because it's on the back side of the two by four. Okay, yeah. So we'll actually just create a step here. Yes. Going up to that. Going to our long point. And this might be the second of seven cuts too. Because it's really, the reason why we're just cutting it, just so everybody knows, this concrete isn't perfect. This concrete over here isn't perfect. So we're just taking high point dimensions. this doesn't show you all what the versatility of ICF is, I don't know what will. I mean, this is crazy stuff here. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, and I think right on that corner now, if we just chamfer the corner, we may get Woo, we're getting close. Yeah, <laughs> which direction do you want to cut it so you don't cut yourself, right? I'd try that. Ooh, still a little high. Just a little. I'm gonna take a little bit off right there. What if we go like that? And we've got room here. And I think we. Might. I think that's I think good. We're good off there. Yeah, I think we're good. One more cut, and I think we'll have it. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You come to an NY Millennial Project, we do crazy stuff around here. You've been the one doing the fitting, so I'll let you finish it. Okay. Um, the, the test will be to put a straight, a straight block across there. I think we might be still coming up just a little bit. Let's cheat. Oh, there you go. Since we know we have our long section, this is alternating our seam, right? Yep, that's what we need next. Now, how does that look on the outside? We got a straight line, or are we kicking up a little? Man, it's. I, th I think that's good. Good. Yeah. Well, there's the Frankenstein corner. That didn't take as long as what I thought. Honestly, that came out good. So now you all can see when concrete flows down in here. Before I stack out any more, as long as I foam in here to make sure concrete can't get under here, I have diminished 100% of my lift. So I would foam from the outside up in here and just kind of foam this off all the way over, over into here, and then concrete would just hit that foam and it'd force it back to the middle of the block. And I think we'll want to you know, we're, we're definitely going to need to reinforce this because as we discussed, there's nothing holding those bottom pieces together. Yeah, so my thought process there is 
I know this corner is suspect anyway. I would just throw a two by six, probably way out here in no man's land, all the way over and bump this wood, toenail it in and screw it to that stud. Yep. And that would capture all of that, screw it to this stud, screw it to that stud, and then that would tighten it all up. And then I'm gonna tap con me a board here mm -hmm. to, to capture this. And then on the outside, I've got some wooden structures I can build off of to come right along the outside yeah. of this ICF Send some wall. some plywood out across there yes. to, to hold back that foam that you're gonna have filling that gap so it can't push out. And worst case scenario, I can take off one piece of metal and then screw off to my trusses and support that entire corner. Because this will, again, this is three feet, that makes four feet. We have seven more feet of ICF that's gonna go on top of that and run along this wall and I will hammer drill in an epoxy rebar verticals out of this to tie that together as well. I sure. Hey. Knuckles on that one. That came out really nice. And I just foam that up, strap it off, call her good. That was almost like we knew what we were doing, wasn't it? Shh. <laughs> I said I'm not the professional. You are. I don't know what I'm doing. You might know what you're doing. Well, we if I knew what I was doing, would I own this? We know more now because I've never done one of those before. There you go. So now you can teach the next guy. There you go. So we have one more, maybe two more difficult pieces, but we're going to do them both the exact same way. We're not going to do them today, <clears throat> excuse me, today, but we wanted to give them a visual, right? That's right. Yep. So these blocks, as you all know, are four foot long. So you simply span a four foot level across. And that is a cross with a T, just for Marty, right? We see that that four feet is maybe a half inch up. So basically, we're going to go top corner of the block to nothing, right? All 12 inches to nothing. But we need to start that angle cut the distance out from this straight block uh nine inches eight and a half probably give you a little bit of room under for foam yep. okay so we're so gonna then... pull eight and a half over here's a pencil come right to here Whoop. right there yep and then, then that goes to in. nothing yeah you want to grab there. that two by four actually here Up we have here. a level we have a level oh, look at that nice straight edge huh so we'll go to that eight and a half inch mark and draw a line all the way to that corner. Flip the block over. Eight and a half. To nothing. Got her? I'm good. I mean, we're this far. We might as well just cut it and put it in there, hadn't we? All right. <laughs> I know we weren't going to, but shoot, we're here. And again, yes, we're making really nice straight lines. He chunked a little bit of, who cares? The foam's gonna fill that in. Foam is your best friend with ICF. I'm right in the web there. I'm going to go from the other direction. Okay. To finish that from the inside. All right. One last block before we let Jason go home for the day. You got a five hour drive, sir. Yes, sir, I do. I so what? Started on that. You can see the, the flat and then the wedge. Let's see how it fits. Here's the test. And it should lock too. would you look at that Man. perfect foam gap we got a little fat on the tip but we knew we would we can foam that up it locked in nice and now we'll start with a long corner which will bring us to here mm -hmm. so then this block may get us darn near the rest of the way pretty close might have one little two two stutter here at the end yep. or something well, i gotta give you another fist bump on that one thank you Thanks, thank man. you thank you we appreciate you coming we appreciate you giving the technical aspects of Superform and putting some sweat equity into the castle. Yeah, well, it's been enjoyable. Thank you. Glad to be here and see this place. It's a really interesting project. <sighs> interesting I, uh, is <laughs> saying the least. I'm really uh, 
I'm really admiring your courage to tackle a project of this size and and uh, it's not courage <laughs> it's stupidity <laughs> but hey we're hanging in there yeah so he's got Matt has a lot of Fridays left before this thing's quite ready to rent <laughs> let's not even talk about that <laughs> well that's today's video second video of the day this one being super form specific hopefully you guys enjoyed and as always like comment subscribe <laughs>